And so the past 10 years, there's been a real renaissance in trying to understand microbes, specifically beneficial microbes. And using mouse models, researchers such as ourselves and many others around the world have understood that microbes impact the immune system and the metabolic system. So immunologic diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, are all appear to be regulated in some way or another by bacteria. The epidemic of obesity and type 2 diabetes appears to be caused by changes in the microbiome. But now, in the past couple of years, we know that the microbiome impacts not just the immune and metabolic system, but the nervous system as well. Anxiety, learning and memory, cognition, locomotion, mood, and, and even pain appear to be controlled by the bacteria that live in our intestines. And so I'd like to tell you a story today about our research in autism spectrum disorder. And this work started as a collaboration between our lab and that of the late Paul Patterson. So what is ASD? What is autism spectrum disorder? ASD is, is characterized by three core features, deficits in, in social interaction, communication, and repetitive stereotype behaviors. But remarkably, ASD has many features that are non-behavioral, and you can see them depicted here. And what really caught our attention were the ones in the upper right-hand corner. Immunologic, gastrointestinal, and metabolic disorders all appear to be coincident with autism in a wide range of, uh, uh, in a wide uh, number of, of children with autism. And we thought to ourselves, maybe there's a connection between bacteria in the gut and ASD. And so how does the gut communicate to the brain? So how does the, the gut or even gut bacteria send signals to the brain? Well, there's actually several different uh, mechanisms by which this can happen. And so we've heard about all the neurons in our, in, in our uh, central nervous system, all the neurons in our brain. But if you think about our peripheral neurons, the neurons that make our, our muscles move, or our senses, uh, or, or our sensory neurons, the neurons that make our heart beat, those peripheral neurons account for only 30% of the neurons outside of our brain. The other 70% of the neurons outside of our brain are in our gastrointestinal tract. There's a rich network of, nerve, of a nervous system, the enteric nervous system, that is specifically in our gut. And perhaps these bacteria have direct access to, the, to these neurons and can send signals through the vagus nerve up into the brain. Again, having direct access to our brains. The other mechanism is actually the immune system. Most immune cells in our bodies are found in our, in our gut, are found in our lower gastrointestinal tract, specifically the colon. And these immune cells, T cells, B cells, and other types of cells, are constantly being educated by gut bacteria. And they carry this information throughout our bodies and into our brain. And perhaps that's how gut bacteria may also send signals to the brain. Neurotransmitters are also signaling molecules, and we've heard about this a little bit today. You may have heard of dopamine or serotonin. These are very common neurotransmitters. About 50% of the dopamine in your body is found in your gastrointestinal tract. 90% of the serotonin in your body is found in your gastrointestinal tract. And we now know gut bacteria influence the production of these neurotransmitters. And the final mechanism is that bacteria produce molecules, soluble metabolites, that then transfer through the epithelial layer, that, that single layer of cells that separates the, uh, the bacteria from the rest of the body. And then these microbial molecules, these metabolites, can travel through the circulation, perhaps even to the brain, and affect behavior. So using the mouse model that Paul developed, we wanted to understand, can we manipulate the gastrointestinal tract in a way where we can derive benefits for behavioral diseases, specifically autism? So in the chart that you, see, that you see here, we're looking at vocalization. As I mentioned, the inability to communicate or, or, or vocalization deficits is a core feature of autism. If you compare the black bars to the white bars, you see that healthy mice communicate more than mice that have features of autism. And so they, uh, healthy, healthy mice call more, and when they do call, when they do vocalize, their duration is longer. And of course, in the autistic mice, that's shorter, mimicking what we know about clinical autism. So we took these animals that have features of autism, and we fed them a specific probiotic that we discovered, a specific bacteria, bacteria that came from humans that we gave to these animals. And you could see it restored this deficit, this core feature of autism. These mice started verbalizing more. They communicated with other mice. And so in, in theory, we have corrected this disorder, at least in mice. As I also mentioned, repetitive stereotype behaviors is a, is a feature of autism. 
and we can measure that in mice as well. So if you compare the black bars to the white bars, you see that mice with features of autism repeat certain tasks many, many times more than mice that don't, don't have autism, than healthy animals. Again, we can take these animals that have these features and give them that same probiotic, and we can reduce their repetitive behaviors down to normal levels. Again, correcting this core feature of autism. And what about the gastrointestinal tract? As I mentioned, children with autism have, have a syndrome called leaky gut. They have symptoms such as constipation, diarrhea, abdominal cramps, and bloating. And again, we see some of these features in the mice with autism. And specific, specifically looking at leaky gut, you can see that in the animals with, the, with features of autism, in the white bars, that there's more leakiness of the intestinal barrier. There's more leakiness of the gut in these animals than there is in the healthy controls. And we can correct this deficit by giving the mice the same probiotic. And so therefore, the same organism, this live therapeutic, can ameliorate both the GI symptoms and the behavioral symptoms of autism. So what do we think this means? So I'm going to leave you with a very provocative hypothesis, that perhaps autism is not a disease of the brain, but a disease of the gastrointestinal tract. It's a, it's a bold hypothesis, but I think the data, at least in mice, suggests that this is true. So I'm going to thank the people who did the work, the wonderful students and fellows in my laboratory, in particular, Elaine Sow, a former graduate student who now has her own lab at, at uh, UCLA, and of course, the late Paul Patterson, who without him, we wouldn't have started on this work. And thank you for listening.